status or honor. The person who said that to me was the second daughter of the CEO of the company I work for, my beloved wife. However, she left this world too soon, without even a moment to spare for last words. Since then, two years had passed. A woman claiming to be my wife's sister approached me, saying, Actually, she is. My name is Tyler Brown, 34 years old. I grew up living with just my mother, as my father was out of the picture from an early age. I heard their divorce was due to petty quarrels, and I never really saw my family situation as complicated. You're nothing like your father, always looking ahead and living earnestly. My mother would say with a hearty laugh, and I adored her for it. However, a tragedy struck when she died in an unexpected accident just as I entered high school. I was taken in by my grandparents. It took a while, but remembering my mother's words, I began to face life head-on with determination. Perhaps it was the resolve that led me to marry an incredible woman at the age of 27. Tyler, let's give it our all today. That was my wife, Mary Johnson, cheering us on as we left for the same company from the same house every morning. Mary was the same age as me, working in HR while I was in the planning department. Her brightness and popularity quickly drew me in, and after a few dinner invitations, Please, would you go out with me? I nervously confessed. She nodded happily but soon turned serious. I have to tell you something. I'm actually the daughter of our company's CEO. Indeed, she was the younger daughter of Ken Johnson, our company's CEO. However, she wanted to work without any preferential treatment and kept that a secret. Despite my shock, I respected her spirit and grew to love her even more. I knew you'd say that. In school, people whispered behind my back about being the president's daughter, but I'm just a regular girl. She said with a smile, and I resolved to cherish her forever. After dating for about two years, we got married. Meeting her family, especially her father, was the most nervous I've ever been. But he laughed heartily, saying, You are well regarded and a perfect match for Mary. Don't worry about the company or succession. If anyone's taking over, it's my eldest daughter, Nancy, who'll bring home a worthy man someday. Beside him, my sister-in-law Nancy smiled demurely. Her demeanor was the opposite of Mary's, which seemed to confirm the CEO's words. Mary was saying, You know, unlike me, my sister has always been smart, and it seems she wants to get married soon. But either her standards are too high, or she's too beautiful that nobody dares to approach her. At that time, I was overflowing with happiness for having received permission to marry. The married life that started with Mary was bliss itself. I was motivated at work, and people around were half-jokingly saying, You could become the next CEO, I guess. But that seemed too daunting, and Mary herself said, Sure, any woman might dream of being a CEO's wife once, but that must be so busy. I'd rather have more time with Tyler than money or status. It was a sentiment that filled me with joy. Indeed, she preferred visiting her favorite cosmos fields over fancy restaurants whenever we had the time. I thought we'd have a leisurely life ahead, perhaps with children. Less than a year to live. Not even two years into our marriage, Mary collapsed and was rushed to the hospital for a thorough examination. The diagnosis left me bloodless. While her father was deeply shocked, Mary herself tried to stay positive. It's okay. Maybe it'll clear up sooner than we think. She said with a laugh, but in private, she broke down. If anything happens to me, Tyler, please keep looking forward and live. I can't help crying when I see your face. I'll write you a letter. Though she left this world too quickly to write anything, by the time I rushed from work to the hospital, only the sobs of her father and sister Nancy could be heard in her room. The funeral proceeded mechanically, and the CEO told me, Take some time off work. 
There's no need to force yourself to continue. That night, alone at home, I cried until dawn, holding a photo of Mary laughing amidst the cosmos fields. As the sun rose, I remembered her words and my mother's, realizing I had to face forward. I called the CEO immediately. I'd like to return to work tomorrow, if possible. I threw myself into work from the next day on, consumed by it. After work, I'd rush home to talk about recent events in front of Mary's photo, and clean up her room, ensuring I never forgot about her. Of course, I felt lonely, but I had resolved to live on my own. One day after a few years passed, the CEO called me in. We met in a formal, private dining room. Do you have any interest in taking over the company? Even setting aside Mary's situation, your efforts and capabilities are such that I believe I can entrust it to you. He said, looking me straight in the eye. I had only worked hard these past two years with the intention of repaying him for bringing Mary into my life. The thought of becoming the next president myself was bewildering. To encourage me, he continued. Mary was looking forward to you becoming the next CEO as well. Did she say that? She had never mentioned such a thing to me, but maybe she was just trying to be considerate, thinking, it's better not to become the CEO. No, I heard it from Nancy. Mentioning his elder daughter's name, as if on cue, the door to the private room opened. Good evening. It's been a while. With her usual long hair and dignified voice, Nancy greeted me. Then, sitting next to the CEO, he broached the real topic of discussion. Of course, we've considered your abilities and believe you can take on the role of the next CEO, after much thought. Would you marry Nancy? Excuse me. I wanted to believe it was some joke, but there was no hint of jest in either of their expressions. However, no matter the excuses, the conclusion wouldn't change. I'm sorry, but I must decline. There's the matter of Mary, and... I understand how you feel. But, what if it was her request? Nancy began to reveal something. She hadn't had much chance to talk to Mary after her hospitalization and had made frequent visits as if to make up for lost time. During their alone time, Mary often mentioned looking forward to me becoming the CEO. Furthermore, It was right before Mary passed away. She held my hand and asked me to please look after Tyler if something happens. I don't think she meant marriage by that. But embarrassingly, I haven't had much luck myself, but I want to consider my father's situation. Of course, it would be a marriage in name only if you prefer. She said so. Hearing about Mary's wishes I was unaware of left me with a complicated feeling. I was facing their desperate pleas and Mary's will, which moved me drastically. Then I said, I understand. Amidst my mixed thoughts, those were the words that came out, thinking it would be for Mary's sake. The conversation progressed smoothly from there, and Nancy was to come live at my place. It was to be a marriage in name only, though. She was working at a company known to her father, and we agreed not to interfere with each other's lives. Even though it was Mary's sister, the idea of living with another woman in a house filled with memories of Mary was something I had reservations about. Would it be alright if I paid my prey to Mary right away? On her first visit to my house, seeing Nancy close her eyes and pray in front of Mary's photo, somehow made me feel more accepting. I know I can't compare to her, but if there's anything I can support you with, please let me know." Nancy said as she started to unpack her things. It might still be a long way off before I actually become the CEO, but if that time comes, perhaps I would need someone's support. I was still in doubt it was really okay with Nancy. But before I knew it, as she struggled to carry a cardboard box with her slender arms, I can help with that. I naturally offered. Surprised by my voice, she lost her grip and dropped the box. I'm sorry. She apologized repeatedly, seeing her, I said. If there's anything I can do to help, 
please let me support you. As I started picking up scattered albums and other items. No, no. I can take care of myself. She hurriedly gathered the scattered items. Honestly, her actions made me curious in a way. She possibly wasn't entirely happy about marrying me, even if it was for her father or sister's sake. Still, I decided to maintain some distance and said, Then, I'll go to the city hall. Feel free to use anything in the house. Holding the already completed marriage registration form for Nancy and me, I left the room. As I drove to the city hall, my mind was swirling with all sorts of thoughts. I needed to hurry before the office closed, but somehow, my mind was adrift, and I found myself driving leisurely. The smile that Nancy had given me when she said, Take care. Kept coming back to me because it reminded me so much of Mary. Moreover, there were the several sheets of stationery that I saw among Nancy's belongings. On the sheets, there was adorned with Mary's favorite flowers, yes, Cosmos, the same ones I happened upon in front of me. There was a park near the city hall that was filled with beautiful, swaying Cosmos. I couldn't help but stop the car and just stand there, lost in thought. Mary would have been delighted to see this. I wish we could have seen it together. I pondered, losing track of time. Eventually, I snapped back to reality, finished my errands and went home. I'm sorry, but I need to rest a bit. I said to Nancy, who was still busy with her tasks, and then I retreated to my bed in my room. Alone, my thoughts wandered to Mary and her family. I was remembering their comments like, Mary was looking forward to you becoming the CEO, or it was right before Mary passed away. She held my hand and said, please take care of Tyler if anything happens. I had always thought Mary was sincere and always spoke her mind. Was she even just being considerate of me? Or could it be? As if to interrupt these troubling thoughts, I fell into a deep sleep, perhaps due to the recent day's busyness. When I woke up, the day had already changed, and the house was silent. I hadn't prepared anything for the next day's work, and more importantly, I had left Nancy alone for too long. I hadn't even told her where she could sleep. Deciding to at least get a glass of water, I left my bedroom. That's when I saw Nancy's figure, illuminated by the moonlight in front of Mary's photo. Perhaps she decided to stay in the living room with her belongings, not wanting to wake me. She must have had so much she wanted to talk to Mary about. When I was about to apologize by feeling guilty about my earlier thoughts, I heard her whisper. Thank you, Mary. I stopped in my tracks, not wanting to intrude on the moment between sisters. That wasn't just it. It seemed like Nancy was smiling in the moonlight. And there was the stationary paper adorned with cosmos in her hands. Before I could connect all the dots, I felt a chill run down my spine. Could it really be? It didn't take long for my suspicions to turn into certainty. Now everything will go to me. At that moment, my fear turned into anger. What do you mean by that? Tyler! You're awake! She exclaimed, startled by the light I turned on and my voice. She turned towards me, visibly shaken, and began to ramble like a child caught in a lie. I thought I'd sleep by Mary's side tonight. But I didn't respond, fixated on one thing. She noticed and tried to hide it, but I picked it up before she could. That was the stationary paper with Cosmos printed on it, addressed to Tyler in familiar handwriting. This is Mary's handwriting, isn't it? Why do you have this? Oh, no, that's... She stammered, struggling for an excuse. I decided to open the letter rather than wait for her answer. Trembling, I pulled out several letters from inside. Mary. There were letters in her handwriting that filled with memories of us and apologies for leaving ahead. 
Mary had indeed left me letters as promised in her hospital room. A mix of emotions threatened to overwhelm me, but as one sentence caught my eye, my anger reignited. I hate to say this about family, but be careful of my sister. She's always been a bit crafty. As I looked back at Nancy, her furrowed brows seemed to be searching for her next move. There was a cunning, calculating expression on her face. It seemed she might have been the first to discover and read Mary's letters, hiding them to twist Mary's last wishes to her advantage, exploiting the fact that Mary was no longer here to speak for herself. You just wanted to be the CEO's wife, didn't you? I questioned Nancy, putting the letters back into the envelope neatly and slipping them into my left pocket, determined not to let Mary be tarnished by her any longer. Then, as if conceding everything, the woman in front of me sighed, then defiantly began to speak. That's right. But think about it. Don't you think I'm far more suitable to be the CEO's wife than some woman who has no abilities other than flattering people? But, no one was interested in you, right? She seemed taken aback by my words for a moment, but quickly smirked and said, Yes, but I'll settle for you. Besides, the marriage certificate has already been filed. With that, she arrogantly leaned back. As for the paper, as I spoke, I pulled a crumpled envelope from my right pocket and dropped the marriage certificate it contained onto the floor. She hastily picked it up, looking up at me with a gaze that was almost insane. I couldn't help but be curious, so I went directly to ask your father about your past instead of going to the city hall. You've been flaunting around as the CEO's daughter, constantly searching for a capable man, haven't you? He said you were looking for someone suitable for the next CEO, but in reality, you were just looking for someone to marry for status and honor. I wasn't sure why I became so fixated on Nancy at that moment. Perhaps it was the cosmos field that suddenly appeared in front of my car on my way to the city hall that made me stop. Looking back, maybe Mary was the one who stopped me. Please just leave now. Never distort Mary's feelings again. I managed to say, holding back my anger. Then Nancy clenched her back teeth and hissed. Why? Why doesn't anything go my way? She stormed out of the house, taking only her smartphone and wallet. She must have been cornered, unable to make calm decisions. But that's no excuse to disrespect my beloved Mary, even if they were sisters. I searched through the cardboard boxes left in the living room. As expected, found another piece of stationary paper with Cosmos on it. Holding the letter addressed, to Dad, I hurried to the CEO's place, despite the late hour. Nancy did such a thing. Reading the hidden letters from Mary, the CEO showed a complex expression just like mine earlier. He didn't go through the contents in detail, but shared a specific part with me. In Mary's handwriting, it said, Tyler is hardworking and dedicated, but he tends to take on too much by himself. So, Dad, please don't push him to be a successor unnecessarily. Mary never wanted me to become the CEO. She loved me for who I am, not for the title. On the contrary, how nasty that woman was. Tyler, I'm truly sorry. Nancy has always been secretive, unlike Mary, but to think she would deceive even me. I couldn't blame him apologized repeatedly, and I was at a loss about what to do next. However, gently returning the letters to the envelope, he looked at me directly and said, I won't interfere in your life anymore, but if you're willing, would you consider being part of the family as my son-in-law, as my beloved Mary's husband? His words saved me, and even years later, I am still working under him. He treats me as his son-in-law and potential successor, sometimes sternly but always with love. Under one condition, I decided to take over as CEO, never to let Nancy claim to be part of Mary's family again. The CEO had intended to disown her even before I said anything, and indeed, he has cut off all contact with her since then.
Moreover, he is considering taking legal action against her for destroying private documents under criminal law. As for her, she has lost her job, her family, and the title she so depended on, wandering aimlessly somewhere. As following my beloved family's advice, I simply look forward. I am now too busy living my life to spare her any thought.